Hey folks, what's up? Welcome to my 8.25 Rep Paladin Guide. Drop a like if this is the first time you're checking out one of my vids. Alright, let's jump right into it. So the recommended rating build we're going to go with for this bit of content is around Righteous Verdict, Hammer of Wrath, Fists of Justice, Repentance, or Blinding Light. It really just comes down to utility for that specific boss. Uh, Wake of Ashes, again, Unbreakable Spirit, Cavalier, or Eye for an Eye. My preference is usually around mobility, but if you know you're going to need to bubble in about every three minutes, then this is a cool way to roll. Or if you don't need either of those, then that's a little bit extra damage. Uh, Word of Glory is the go-to for your level 90 talents. And then up here in the hundreds, Crusade is the way to go for the raid build. Now, as you go into the Mythic build, there's almost two splits. There's one for Fortified or Bolstering, when you're doing a lot of small pulls. Uh, that mixes Righteous Verdict, kicks it over to Zeal. You're going to stay with Hammer of Wrath. That mobility is a, is a little bit of a perk, have an additional range. Um, Fist of Justice can work perfectly fine. Wake of Ashes is still the same build. Uh, Cavalier is what I use for Mythic Plus almost all the time. Word of Glory, still the same. But your level 100 or your tier 7 is actually going to be the divine purpose. And we can dig into that at length, but really just makes life a little bit easier. It's a little bit less wings, but totally worth it. Um, alternatively, for Mythic Plus, if you're on a tyrannical week or if you're going with massive reaping, get back to kind of your single talent build. So Righteous Verdict gets the call again. Um, Word of Glory still stays the same here for Tier 6 and Tier 7. Crusade becomes the choice once again. So the only real change is Zeal versus Righteous Verdict and Divine Purpose versus Crusade. That's kind of the difference between the, the Mythic Plus and your straightforward raid build at this point. Now, independent, you can almost go through the Eternal Palace and, and tweak these talents, but this will get you through 80% of what it is you need. Now, as far as Azrite traits go, the recommended Azrite trait build, go with one Imperium Power, go with one Light's Decree, two Avengers Might, and two Treacherous Govern Covenant. For pure single target, you can change out Imperium Power to Avengers Might or Treacherous Covenant, depending on what it is you're looking to smash out. Now, I want to talk about Azrite traits a little bit deeper, but really, Azrite traits your talents and your stats, even your essences, almost require at this point some some detailed study. So go check out Blood Mallet or one of the other simulation pages, but Blood Mallet's going to tell you straight up. Undulating Tides and Light's Decree are your, basically your go-tos from an Azrite talent standpoint for 1 and 2, and then or 3 and 4, and then Tier 2 of your Azrite traits, Overwhelming Power is... 30% or 50% better than, than the second best trait, gut, re, gut Ripper. So take some time to check that out. As far as essences go for your Heart of Azeroth, Vision of Perfection is the go-to. Go pick that up. That's absolutely fantastic. Um, slightly less appealing, but Condensed Life Force will get you that next stretch. Um, so really, Vision of Perfection, got to go work the reputations and complete the Nash Tatar storyline, condense life force. You're only going to get that through deep end rating. I don't do a lot of that on my pal anymore, but those are your top two talents. After that, you want to get to a rank three Crucible of Flame if you're not going to get either of those two. And really, Crucible of Flame is easy. You, you basically just follow the storyline and it'll walk you through it. That's the easy build as far as essences go. Um, trinkets, there's two you want to try to obtain above any of the rest. You want to get Ash Veins, Razor, Coral. That's the, the top DPS there. Obviously, you, you know where that's coming from. Head to the Eternal Palace. Or Azara's as Font of Power. So both them, you're, you're going to go push the, the deep end content. Now, if we dig into stat priority, secondary stats are preferentially built this way. So haste is the best, followed by crit. Verse and mass are both the same, and then strength afterwards. Remember, it comes down to really being able to simulate what your stat priorities are going to be. 
how it fits your Azrae traits, your talents, and, and the essences that you have. As far as races go, if you want to be a min-maxer on the Horde side, Torrin is top, followed by Draenei on the Alliance side. Now, when it comes to playstyle and rotation, you've got a couple options here. Again, I largely lean towards go with a Crusade build, but we'll touch on a, an Inquisition build here in a moment. If you've talented Crusade, like I have on the screen right now, preferentially you want to start off with Blade of Justice, then tag with Judgment. It gets up to three Holy Power, then go with Crusade. Now you're at Templar's Verdict, go with Wake of Ashes, Templar's Verdict, Hammer of Wrath, and Templar's Verdict again. That's, that's a maxing what that build looks like. Alternatively, if you're going to go with an Inquisition, go with Blade of Justice, Judgment, tag an Inquisition, that could see your uses your three holy power. Now again, go to Avenging Wrath, or use your wings. Go to Wake of Ashes, Templar's Verdict, and Hammer of Wrath. If you don't play with Hammer of Wrath, change it out to Crusader Strike, or if Blade of Justice is ready, use that. Um, in AoE events, so basically Mythic Plus largely, um, just replace Templar's Verdict in this build with Divine Storm and they're largely interchangeable. So when it comes to single target rotation with Paladins, it's pretty straightforward. The most important thing is to keep Righteous Verdict up for as long as you can. What I see most people do is spend three Holy Power on Templar's Verdict, and that's kind of a mistake. As soon as they have it, because of that, they drop their Righteous Verdict buff off a lot. And when it comes to use Templar's Verdict, you have to look at all your spells, holy power, and righteousness time left. If you're at three or four holy power and righteous is at three seconds left, you can always fit in an extra spell before you press Templar's Verdict. That's the key differentiator. Like take nothing away from this guide, take that away. When it comes to what spell to use first, if they're all on if they're all off cooldown, use Blade of Justice, followed by Judgment, Crusader Strike, and if you have it, Hammer of Wrath last. But when it comes to what spell to use, it's not as simple as, oh, Blade and Judgment are ready, so let me use that. You have to look into your Holy Power and Righteous Time left. That's that's the key. So keep that in mind. Maybe even set up a weak aura if that's, that's your jam. As far as macros go, there's a whole bunch out there. Um, really, the, the easy ones are Lay on Hands, Flash of Light. There's a Bop macro. Uh, blessing of Freedom, Cleanse Toxins, and there's a PvP Blessing of Sanctuary. All kinds of pretty solid macros out there. Load up on them, but then again, take some time, folks, to figure out, one, that you can learn and know how to sim your character. Two, figure out how you want your interf interface to be set up. I, I like this. It kind of is intuitive to me and the mouse that I use. And then finally, figure out what add-ons you want to roll with. Are you a weak auras individual? Are you bigwigs? What, what's the addition to your, your setup that you like to jam with? All right, folks, that's largely it. Let me know what you like. Let me know what I can do better. Um, if you made it this far, hit that subscribe button. It helps me out a ton. It keeps me motivated to keep going. Thanks again for watching, and I will talk to you soon. See ya.